Hello there reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. Today we're looking at Randomizer version 3 and it is a very big update. As you can see running in the background I've got a cron, I've got all the parameters running and if you remember rightly I used to have quite a big issue with the DSP and I believe we've got the DSP under control. Yes it's flickering onto two bars there but most of the time it'll actually run on just the single bar and I will go into a lot more further details about that in a bit but what it means is we can control up to 476 parameters at once now so what that means is big devices like Respire where there's a lot of controls there's a lot of panels there's a lot going on in the background we we can control everything that has been made available to us via the remotes so really without further ado I think we should have a quick look at the back end and uh, see what's going on so for those who have been following the progress of the randomizer will recognize this sort of looking combinator. Um, big difference is, is actually inside them. We no longer have all the LFOs which were really eating up the, the DSP. Yes, we still have our 120 odd EMIs, so nothing has changed there. And there is a couple of, there's a special thing going on with this EMI at the top in the Thor. But I'm going to leave that for another video. I want to keep this a little bit more high level, mainly for uh, our new users who might be coming on board and looking at this. So we do have four banks. Um, each one is controlling a 119 parameters. Uh, you can just simply just click on the random button. And it, this is more of a, every time you click this, it's going to randomize. Yeah, so don't worry about if it's coloured on or not. Um, so every time I'm clicking this, you can see it's randomising. So as I said earlier, we control up to 476. And this is how we're doing it by all four banks. And I will go into a little bit of detail of how we can actually daisy chain these four combinators together. So all you have to do is just obviously click on one button and it will randomize the, the complete device you're looking at. Um, I'm just going to quickly switch back here to Poltergeist and the reason I'm going to switch back to Poltergeist is obviously it's got slightly bigger controls and it's a little bit easier to see one or two things. So for those who can remember in the past as you can see if you look at the level and if you look at the output in this particular case when I'm randomizing they're flicking all over the place so I don't want this output level zooming and randomizing all over the place. So I know that output happens to be CC01. Uh, so I can actually just turn that off. So now when I click my randomize, you can see that output there is not moving. So every time I'm clicking it, click, 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 it's not moving at all. And at the case with this level, it's jumping all over the place. And I might think, actually, I only want this level to sort of randomize, say, between this kind of range. So we can do that as well, and I know that happens to be CC23. So what we just do, we can just sort of grab this up a bit, set the base level, and we flip round to the back, and we take the trim, we can take the trim right down. And just as a reminder, remember, this is base, so base plus the trim will be your maximum amount, and obviously this would be the equivalent of the minimum amount. So the trim, Bringing that down is not the maximum amount, it's base plus the trim. So now if we go up here, I'm going to start, I'm going to hit the randomize button. You can see that level now is hardly moving at all. So I've probably trimmed it down maybe a little bit too much. Oh no, there we go, that's good. And that's how we can also control certain parameters. So just to clarify what I'm trying to do here for your new users is sometimes you don't want every single parameter hard panning maybe you know it, it can be whatever you want whatever device you're using you've got the ability to actually go in and, and actually say actually i only want this moving a little bit or i want to turn it off altogether and to be honest with a number of instruments there is definite things on them it's worth turning off it's not worth randomizing um and obviously like the volume and that it's worth obviously getting them set if not, you're going to end up with a random like that. And obviously when you hit a key, nothing's going to come out. So you, you really want to um, stop that from happening. 
Now, earlier I said there is a way that we can actually daisy chain all these four devices together. So when we hit one key, we're going to randomize the lock. Now I'm just going to space these out because when you actually expand these um, combinators, they, um, they're so large that you, it becomes really hard to wire up. So at least this way I can get to the wine really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the end of the sequence out of the Thor and we're going to put it to trigger the next Thor. And again, and that's all we're going to do is daisy chain them together. And again, we're going to take end of sequence out and we're going to pull it into the trigger of the next one. Now, obviously, you might think, oh, I'm going to be clever and do the start of and put that in. But just think about the amount of MIDI messages that you're going to be sending around. Yeah, and you know, we, as I said, you've got 476 devices plus my controller, so it's, that's 480 MIDI messages you're going to be firing off. Um, and you're just going to basically get some errors and you're going to probably uh, crash your, your loopbacks because you just won't be able to handle all the data. So, at least by doing it this way, daisy chain it this way, we're not sending quite as much MIDI data. So, let me just give uh, Cron the focus and oh again for, for new users ideally I usually will lock these um, MIDI ports to the device I'm really randomizing so you can't accidentally randomize the wrong device so you just you know right click on it go down click on it and that's locked um, I'm not going to lock on for this particular purpose because obviously I'm switching between devices so now when I click on my random button, you can see it, it randomizes. Everything is randomized all in one go. One click, one randomize. Um, you may notice that it takes a little bit of time. So going from the top left to the bottom right, being the bottom right being bank four, you can see that's just a slight delay. But, you know, as I say, because we're randomizing, I don't think that's much of a delay we really, really need to worry about at all. So that's about it, and I think probably the next thing to do is have a look at the installation. Installation. So the first thing we need to set up on our system will be a MIDI loopback. I haven't used this loop MIDI, um, and obviously I know the Mac has it already built in. If you've never used a MIDI loopback before, I do have a video called The Beginner's Guide to EMI and MIDI Loopback in Reason. Um, this is a very straightforward app. Once it's actually um, up and running, let's see if I can put it up, there we go, it's up and running. You just add your ports and the four ports that we actually do need happen to be this uh, random bank one, bank two, bank three and bank four. Um, to add them in very quickly, you just at the very bottom type in what you want. So say random bank five, click on the plus and it will add the new MIDI port for you. If you made a mistake in this, the mistelling, spelling or something you just click on the minus to remove it and you can just re-add it again and you can kind of do these on the fly as well so it doesn't matter also within this particular program there is this little mute button the advantage of the mute is it makes the MIDI port still available so Reason can still see the MIDI port however any MIDI data it sends to it it doesn't do anything the, the MIDI loopback just stops so the second part uh, and by the way, I will put these links in the description. And so the second part, what we need to do is on my Dropbox, again, I'll put the description there. Um, I think the link comes to actually here, the CV stuff, go into random and download this zip file. And let me just quickly grab the zip file. Here it is. And all you've got inside the zip file, very straightforward. We've got our four combinators. So obviously you need to save them to your favorite directory. And we've got this other little folder here called remote. So you need to get that copied off and uh, put it into um, your program data propeller head site. Just drop it in there. It's going to obviously prompt you to say, oh yeah, things exist. Just say yes to overwrite. Obviously have a look first and you realize that it's actually not going to be actually overwriting anything. And obviously on Mac users, I think it goes into your library application support for head head software. You drop it there. So if we have a very, very quick look through, you can see there isn't really much going on. We've got ourselves a, a Kodak here, and these are really the randomized Kodaks, and obviously we've got some maps. And that's all it's going to actually in, install onto your system. It's, it's nothing else. 
And then once that's running, so we've set up our MIDI loop back, we've now dropped down the codex. What you need to do then is to actually restart Reason, and I've left that MIDI loop back software up in the screen, so let's get rid of that as well. And so we just need to restart Reason. And obviously once Reason's up and running, under edit, preferences, and then here, this is where we can set up our control services. So let me just go and delete one of these. In fact, I'll delete the bottom one. Bank four, let's say. There we go, there's bank four. We can hit delete. So that's now gone. What I'm gonna do is click on add. And obviously this is what you have to do four times and it's quite straightforward. Under manufacturer, you can see randomizer. And then obviously under the model, you've got bank one, two, three, and four. In this case, I'm going to select bank four. And then ideally down here, well, you should be pointing it into random bank four. Yeah. So we're going to select that. And then the final thing I tend to do is I just tidy up the name a little bit, just so it's a little bit better. So I'm going to call it randomizer bank four. Click OK. And now that's set up, as I say, when you right click, that's where they'll appear. Obviously, because I've deleted and added this one, it's now obviously moved into a different um, position in this particular list. And it allows us obviously to lock the, that port, or should I say that controller, to the device you want. As I say, the advantage of doing that, if you remember before, so it doesn't matter if you're actually giving focus to other things, the randomizer will only ever work on that device. Um, there is a little gotcha with the randomizer as well. Um, so I'm just going to lock everything off to this device. When you, and this, I can't do anything about this because this is really the way Reason is handling the, um, the patches. So if I pull up my MIDI loop, there we go, you can see the four banks. If I actually pull in A randomizer patch you can see it's loading up and if you look very carefully you're going to suddenly see some movement with bytes as it loads in towards the end so it's actually firing off a bit of data there um, and obviously this was a live system say so you might suddenly find it's actually changed some parameters without you knowing about it and again I think I noticed as well actually when I removed the device I think it did fire off again so let's keep an eye on there let's do a quick delete of this device I see that actually fire off some data as well. I haven't actually got in and analyzed the data yet. I should really put a, a, a MIDI sniffer on there and see exactly what's, yeah, so it sent a few bytes out there um, while it's removing that device as well. So that that's basically the installation in a, a nutshell. As I say, you know, it is that straightforward of getting yourself um, your MIDI loop back software, grab a drop box, set up your surface controllers, and uh, you should be able to drop these in and you should, should you know, start working. Happy randomizing, and anything you share back, I'll make sure it gets out to the community. Thanks for watching.